Welcome to WholeBrainTeaching.com. We are broadcasting live on this Tuesday, February 21st. An incredible show for you tonight. We continue our course, Teaching Challenging Kids 101. This is Lesson 3, Teach OK. And I've got to tell you before we even get started, we're going to reveal some new programs tonight, new organization. You are so, you're going to be so delighted. I just hope, please, sit down while you watch the show. Because it's a shorter fall to the floor when you faint with delight about what's going to happen during the show and especially at the end. Great things coming up. Here we go, my friends. Lesson 3, Teach OK. I'm Chris Biffle with WholeBrainTeaching.com. Well, what is WholeBrainTeaching.com? Let me tell you. 50,000 members and counting. Videos, 2 million views on YouTube and TeacherTube. 10 million pages of free materials downloaded. One of the world's most popular education websites. That's who we are. And we reach out all the way tonight to Malaysia. We have folks from overseas every single Tuesday night. We're delighted that Shaja Jamal is here, one of the lead whole brain teachers in Malaysia. Let's press forward, my friends. Now, First, a word, as always, from Birdland. The word from Birdland. What if someone wants a copy of these slides or professional development credit? That's Biffy Bluebird. Biffy, welcome to you. Thank you for visiting us from Bluebird Planet. That's OK, Coach. Just glad to be here. I'm very, very excited. And Bobby Bluebird, I'm glad you came along with your brother Biffy. Easy breezy. Details are at the end of the program. This is program 516, my friends. And if you want professional development credit, oh my goodness, you've come to the right place. And check it out. A brand new opening graphic. Here we are. Look. If you get real close to the screen, get right up to it, look down inside that red dot, you'll see me, Coach B, broadcasting to you from Yucaipa, California, the center of the whole brain teaching universe. Now, we started in about 1970. That's when I started teaching. That was back before rocks. It was just when dirt was coming in. And for 29 years, I was locked in lecture discussion, frustrated, talking, teaching, gyrating, energizing. And it was all me. I was the show, folks. It was like this. 29 years locked in lecture discussion. I'm pushing on the brake. I'm pushing on the gas. Just remembering confuses me. I'm pushing on the gas. They're pushing on the brake. Gas, brake, gas, brake. 29 years. You know the story. And then one day, I began to find some new techniques to teach Aristotle. And I used those new techniques. And I was coaching girls middle school basketball at the time. And I used the same techniques that I was using to teach Aristotle to teach basketball, and bingo, bango, bongo, it worked. No matter whether I was teaching an ancient Greek philosopher or the intricacies of zone defense, same teaching technique, I thought, oh my goodness, maybe this is something. I'm the kind of guy who's always thinking maybe this was something, but that time I was right. It was something. That's why you're here tonight. Well, check it out. Here is a picture of Coach B and one of my former students, Chris Rexted, 
co-founder of Whole Brain Teaching. He was an elementary school teacher. And he and I and some others joined together in 1999 and put together this crazy system. And it's now used in over 30 foreign countries. Recently, Coach B was in Istanbul, Turkey. Yes, that Istanbul, Turkey. Not the one down there in Arizona or Nevada. Istanbul, Istanbul, Turkey, Turkey. It's jumping all over the planet, my friends. Worldwide education reform. Let's go. Here we are. Whole brain teaching overview. We have our daily instruction techniques, and that's what the lessons are. Two weeks ago was class yes. One week ago, five classroom rules. Tonight, it's the teach OK. Next week, the scoreboard, then hands and eyes, then mirror, then switch. You're looking at an incredible seven week series of the mighty seven that we've been using for over a decade. After that, we're going on to our year-long classroom management system set up like a video game, level one scoreboard, then the practice cards, and you got kids that back talk you, level three, the guff counter, level four, the independence, and the other big piece of whole brain teaching is basic skills. We got all the bases covered reading, math, writing, state standards, critical thinking, leadership training, the big picture. And I'll tell you why it's growing. Three reasons. One, it's fun. Yeah. Like we're the first education reform movement with a sense of humor. Our kids like to laugh. Have you noticed that? They're sometimes they're laughing even when we don't want them to laugh. They like to laugh so much. So one, it's fun. Two, it's free. Yes. Go to wholebrainteaching.com. Download the books, over 30 of them. Free. And three, it works. Fun, free, and effective. I wish I could get another fun, free, effective fee. That's what it is, my friends. So let's talk about Teach OK and get the picture. Here we are, the big seven. Uh, class yeses are attention getter. The five classroom rules are our organizer. And the teach OK is the whole brain activator. We're going to talk a little bit about brain structure tonight, my friends. Fun, free, effective, and fabulous, says Rise Kinder. Yes, indeed, one of the needs of kids is to have fun, as Mickey points out here online. Here's the word from Bluebird Planet. Here's how to start the whole brain activator. Teach OK. The teacher says, when I say teach, you say OK. And then pause for a second. Teach. And the kids say OK automatically. The teacher then says, good. Now when I say teach, you say OK. And turn to your neighbors and teach them the five classroom rules. Pause for a second. Teach. The kids say, OK. And the students teach their neighbors the five classroom rules. My friends, that's how easy it is to start to teach OK. First, you've got to have them knowing some stuff before they can teach it to each other and just do the five classroom rules. I'll review the rules real fast right now because we have a special special thing coming up with the rules before tonight's broadcast ends. But you know rule number one, follow directions quickly. Rule number two, raise your hand for permission to speak. Rule number three, raise your hand for permission to leave your seat. Rule number four, make smart choices. And rule number five, keep your dear teacher happy. Show them those with the gestures, and then you're ready to do the teach OK. You've got something fun for them to teach each other, the five classroom rules. And bingo, it'll start right away. Let's look at pattern one for the teach OK. Chris Rexted, delighted to have you online. Chris, did you get online in time to see your picture that was featured tonight? I hope you saw your picture. Here's Teach OK Pattern 1. 
the red box is the teacher and the I don't know what you'd want to call it chartreuse box are the students the teacher says class the kids say yes then you speak briefly and clap twice and say teach and the students then teach each other over and over what you said because as we say on bluebird planet the longer you talk the more students you lose that's right biffy bluebird could you tell us that one more time but with more oomph say it like you mean it biffy the longer you talk the more students you lose yeah good old biffy bluebird yes my friends the key to the teach okay is speak briefly how briefly you can't be too brief 15 seconds 30 seconds the longer you talk the harder it is for kids to repeat to each other what you just said now listen to me this is a point that I don't make often enough at the start of a lesson you speak briefly and then you keep adding pieces to it when you get down here you know further into the lesson you can talk a little bit longer if you're reviewing what you've said that's the only time that we want to talk a little longer we talk longer in the review piece because we've already said some of this stuff if you have questions please type them in we've got some outstanding whole brain teaching gurus online just delighted to help you let's look at teach okay pattern two and Chris Rexted I hope that you are sitting down because we've got about four incredible announcements we're gonna make at the end of tonight's broadcast Chris are you sitting down now here's teach okay pattern two you start with class they say yes you speak briefly you clap twice and say teach the students teach each other over and over what you said they don't just teach each other once then you walk around the room checking comprehension and start over yes all day long we've got to do a comprehension check don't go by the look on their faces don't go oh you look like you understand don't say this any questions no one raises their hand so you say well I guess you must understand it just wait till Friday no have them teach each other walk around the room and listen to what your kids are saying and don't just go to the best kids and don't just go to the weakest kids I think the first place you should go often is the borderline kids these are the kids who might get it who might not get it if they've got it that's a good sign that maybe you're ready to go on to some other stuff but comprehension check you're walking 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 yes my friends glasses are coming off you're walking all day in your classroom and guess what whole brain teaching is the only weight loss method you need cuz you're walking now you might say wait a second coach B I get tired yes you do get tired I'll put my glass I'll put my glasses back on so I can take them off again yes you get tired with whole brain teaching but my friends are you going home fresh as a daisy now are you going home feel like oh I have so much energy after hassling kids all day long if you're in teaching guaranteed you're gonna go home tired you're either gonna go home tired from hassling kids or you're gonna go home tired from teaching kids your choice I think I know what your choice is gonna be that's what's leading me to put my glasses back on again with a flourish there is the flourish now as my friends are pointing out online the kids are gonna go home just as tired as you are does that sound like teaching heaven here is pattern three same thing class yes you speak briefly you clap twice and say teach but when you're teaching add some gestures use your hands as you talk be expressive you know we have a big problem we're gonna try to solve today and that problem is you know what's a numerator and what's a denominator be expressive if you're expressive 
your kids will be expressive with each other. We want kids to be using gestures. Why? We're coming to the brain structure in a second, but just a preview. Here's the motor cortex up here. The brain's most powerful learning area is right up here. That's why we want the gestures going. That's right, Annette. Big gestures. Let's look at our next screen. Now, here's pattern four. So, you use gestures, you use the comprehension, and the kids use the gestures as well. Then you've got 100% student involvement, bell-to-bell -bell instruction. Everybody's using everything they've got as a human being in order to learn. What do we have as a human being to learn? Well, let's take a look at the brain to see what happens when we're listening to lecture. Look at that graphic. The brain listening to lecture. Wernicke's area is on the front left hemisphere, and it's activated and we're processing language as we listen to it. And then the hippocampus, deep inside the brain, is where memories are formed, formed by repetition. That's why you're repeating yourself, because you have an intuitive feeling, I've got to say this a few times. You're trying to switch on the hippocampus. But you can't get that hippocampus switched on if you talk, 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 talk. You know, here's a little graphic. You know, let's say that this is uh, short-term memory, and here you are talking. Uh, short-term memory has a limited capacity, and you can keep talking, and the glass will overflow, but it'll never get bigger. My friends, if you talk for two hours, you're not going to increase the capacity of short-term memory. In fact, you're going to burn it out. Yes, we talk too much. We're talkaholics. Let's look at the next brain diagram. What do you think the brain looks like on whole brain teaching? Well, you know what it looks like. Bingo! The prefrontal cortex, activated by the class yes and the teach OK. Broca's area, that's the speaking part, activated by teach OK. Wernicke's area, it's going with the teach OK, the limbic system, the emotions, the feelings. Hippocampus is activated by all these brain areas. Visual cortex, making gestures, motor cortex. Do you see something repeated there quite a few times? The teach OK. Wait a second. Let's call it the whole brain activator. Oh, no. We can't call it that. We already called it the whole brain activator. It activates the whole brain. The kids are listening, and they're watching you do gestures. So you got the visual cortex. You've got the Wernicke's area here towards the left side of the, And then you say, teach. They turn to their neighbors. They talk, they listen, they see, they do. They have a blast activating the limbic system, whole brain activation. Yes, remember I said our system works because it's fun? Nothing more fun than having your whole brain electrified with learning vibes. Yes, my friends. Let's look at how the brain learns. Let's look. Input from the senses goes into short-term memory, and a limit of three to seven items in short-term memory. Think about it. You're on the phone, and someone gives you a phone number. 562-70-8617, you know? Uh, you got to say it over and over again. And if you say 562, that isn't really three items. That's one item, 562. That's why our phone numbers are broken up in those chunks. Area code, local, and then individual number. That's three chunks. Why do they do that three chunks? Because short-term memory can only hold three to seven items, and seven's pushing it. So yes, remember the image of the glass. The longer you pour, you're not going to make the glass any bigger. 
the more you talk, you're not going to expand short-term memory. Nobody talks that good to create a brain transformation. Now, how do we get from short-term memory to long-term memory? Repetition and use a lot of brain areas. So that's what you do. You hit that phone number, you say it over and over and over and over and over, and then you write it down. Well, in our classroom, we're doing lots of repetitions and we're using the whole brain. And notice this, no limit. You know, sometimes we say in, in college, oh, I'm learning all this new stuff and it's pushing other stuff out. That's, that's exaggeration. There's no limit to how much information your brain can store. If you let it store it with a lot of repetition and activating the whole brain. Lecture has little repetition. In fact, the lecture just speeds through and few brain areas, weak long-term memory. WBT, much repetition. Many brain areas, strong long-term memory. Do you see the beauty and power of the Teach OK? I'm sure you do, but how could you design a whole brain teaching lesson. Oh, good question. Here's our lesson planner. Just make three columns. Left column, write down, say class to remind yourself. Middle column, just write down a few words. Right column, clap twice and say teach. So, let's say you're going to do a lesson on fractions. So you get excited. Here's a good way to start a lesson. Watch me. Class, yes. Oh, today we're going to do something that's so exciting. Here's our excitement gesture. Tell your neighbor how excited you are to learn about fractions. Tell your neighbor how excited you are. Teach. Kids love to be excited like that. That's our excitement gesture. Then talk about the numerator. Give the gesture. Do the teach OK. Talk about the denominator. Give the gesture. And Jeff Battle is online. Well, we've got all of America all the way back there on the East Coast. Another one of our outstanding whole brain teaching presenters. Then review the top and bottom numbers. Use an example about, you know, we have a pie and now I eat one of the four slices. I ate one of four. I ate one fourth. You know how to do it. The thing is, is that we're talking too long. Use the WBT lesson planner. And you know what, my friends? If this is going a little fast for you, there's a way at the end that you can get a copy of all of these slides. And we've got four incredible announcements. You know, I just hope I remember at the end of the broadcast about the four incredible announcements we've got coming at you. They're slipping through my mind now. I, I did tell people to start, I hope you're sitting down, because if you're sitting down, you don't have to fall so fl far to hit the floor from excited overcharge of these four announcements. I just, I don't think I'm hyping it enough, but you get the sense. Something's coming here. All right, let's go back to the screen. Now, check it out. Why should we use gestures? The highest memory retention is the motor cortex. Lowest memory retention, Wernicke's area. Music teacher, you're going to have to wait even though you're speaking all in caps. Motor memory lasts decades. We never forget how to ride a bike. So you learned how to ride a bike when you're 10. Let's say you don't get on it for 80 years. At 90 years old, you can still ride that stinking bike. Why? It's in motor memory. Gestures also engage the visual cortex. Did you ever notice that you remember faces better than names? That's because the visual cortex is the brain's largest area. So when you're making gestures and your kids are making gestures, it's registering in the visual cortex. When students speak using gestures or listening while mirroring gestures, the teacher immediately sees who's on task. So you see the importance of those gestures. 
Kid is using gestures, and the other kid should be mirroring those gestures, locked together. Whole brain, locked with whole brain. Students teaching students. Teachers teaching students who are teaching students. Teaching heaven, yes, my friends. Some of you have been there. Check out the names in red, my friend. Those are our experts. Three kinds of gestures. Casual, talking with your hands. Here's a casual gesture. So Jeff Battle is talking about science in the bloodstream, and he's just doing this. That's casual gestures. Graphic, gestures that tell a story or describe a process. All right, here's a process. Now first we have our introduction, then we have our body, about three paragraphs, and then we have our conclusion. So up here, introduction, one paragraph. Down here, body, about three paragraphs. Down here, conclusion. See, that's a process that I described in the gestures. Or, you know, first, Little Red Riding Hood, she puts on her red riding hood, and then she goes off into the forest, but someone is in the woods looking at her. Those are graphic gestures that tell a story. Graphic gestures tell a story or describe a process. Or memory gestures, gestures linked to state standards. Here's the exciting part. Figure out gestures that will go with your state standards. So numerator, denominator, I'll show you that in a second. X for multiplication, hands clasped for compare, fist bumping for contrast, here they are. So this can be your fractions gesture, numerator, denominator. This could be your uh, multiplication gesture, X. Oh, I want you to compare, and I want you to contrast. Jeff Battle is a genius at coming up with gestures. There's a section on our website where you can go to ask questions about gestures, and Jeff and others will help you figure out gestures. And what do we charge? The same thing we charge for everything. Nada, zip, zero, zilch. The favorite amount of no cash. All right, my friends, let's look at leadership training. First of all, select leaders to cue the teach OK. Give the leaders examples of various tones of voice to use. When you point at a leader, they clap twice, they say teach, and students respond. The leaders are slow or lack confidence, rehearse. We really deeply believe in leadership training. So everything we do, we can pass on to selected students. So use leadership training for the Teach OK. You have a kid who's like a highly energetic kid. You say, all right, now John, whenever I point at you, you're going to go teach. Or John, if you want to get a little creative, you could go teach. Or you could go uh, uh, teach. Let them be creative. We like on-task laughter where we're all laughing together as an integral part of the lesson. Or you have a quiet kid. The quiet kid, you know, the teach OK might be just something to bring that child out of his or her shell. I'm sure Deb Weigel and Rise Kinder and Budsley can tell you amazing stories, they're online tonight, of how kids have developed into leaders who they never would have guessed. Teach OK. Here's one of our friends from Bluebird Planet. I wonder if you could do something besides clap twice. Yes, you could. How about clap stamping or head patting and stomach rubbing? How about desk drumming? How about yee-hawing? How about hulu-ing? How about lariat whirling? Zoinking, tooting, yahooing, mooing, oinking, quackety, quackening, and then say teach. Yes, my friends. Have a little fun, have some variety, but here comes one of our favorite guests. JJ Jive. Welcome, JJ. Good to have you on the program tonight. Yeah, Coach B, it's good to be here, man. I'm just a uh, Rompin' and a bumpin' with your 
Whole brain teaching style. Oh, it's wild. But Coach B, tell me this. What about critical thinking? Isn't critical thinking important? I'm very concerned about critical thinking. JJ Jive, thank you so much for bringing up the topic of critical thinking. We're often asked about this. In fact, people say, uh, you know, this sounds good, but when are the kids going to do critical thinking if they're just teaching each other what you just said? Here's the point we want to make. In order for kids to do critical thinking, they got to learn some stuff first. Now, you can put in the critical thinking stuff right away, but first, if they're going to think critically, give them a foundation, give them some stuff to reshape in creative ways. Even better, even better, my friends. The word from Bluebird Planet. Ask students a question or give them a task. And they'll be doing critical thinking, coming up with their own answers with their neighbors. Then do the teach okay. That's what we mean by critical thinking, my friends. You got the kids used to talking to each other. That's beautiful. But then use it for higher order thinking skills. So you might say, what are the similarities and what are the differences between these two stories? Between Abraham Lincoln and between George Washington. Talk about the similarities and use gestures. Talk about the differences and use gestures. You know what? Pull some examples out of your head and say, for example, use the because clapper in your critical thinking. Folks, take a look at our brain toys. One of the videos that we have online will show all kinds of critical thinking skills. But just remember, critical thinking can start anytime you want to by just asking a question and having pairs of students talk about the answer then they're coming up with stuff that you never told them. Critical thinking is easier to introduce in a whole brain teaching classroom than any other because the kids are trained to talk to each other. Yeah. So they're not just sitting there like, I'm supposed to think critically, what's that? Critical thinking, according to the Greeks, began with dialogue. Yeah. I'm, am I'm, I'm amazed. Here I am, a philosophy teacher, 40 years. Chris Rexted, you're one of my former students. And why have I never said this before? The dialogues of Plato, in which Socrates is talking to other people, they're not called the Platonic monologues. It's the Platonic dialogues. Critical thinking begins centuries ago with Socrates talking to someone else. That's how we do critical thinking. It's Socratic. And I've never even mentioned that before. Oh, what an exciting night it is. Coach B is coaching himself. Classes are going back on, my friends. All right. Let's look at some of those critical thinking questions. What are the similarities between Achilles and Paris in the Trojan War? What are the differences between Achilles and Paris in the Trojan War? How many different ways can you solve math problem 32? Use because as many times as you can while describing the gold rush. If you and your neighbors were illustrators, what pictures would you draw for a story? All critical thinking, higher order thinking skills, they're beginning with a question. So simple. Create and solve as many long division problems as you can in the next five minutes. How many blue things can you name? Speak complete sentences with your partner. Take turns using active verbs to describe what you would do on your dream vacation. Can you count backward from 100 by threes? Can you use the vocabulary word descend in 10 sentences? Ask them some questions, my friend. All right, here's the summary, and then we're going to get to some amazing announcements. Is everyone sitting down? Are you sitting down? Because, you know, four amazing announcements might be too much. Summary. Use the class yes attention getter. Speak briefly, 15 to 45 seconds. 
Use graphic gestures as you speak, clap twice, or use other tradition, transitions and say teach. Students clap twice and say OK. They use other tra transitions for additional fun. We want the kids speaking using gestures, and when kids are listening, they should be mirroring gestures. To monitor comprehension, walk around the classroom, praise students who are making gestures, prompt students who aren't making gestures. For leadership training, transfer responsibility to selected leaders to say teach, and for critical thinking, pose questions or tasks. Folks, if you have any questions, type them in online and pay attention to the names in red. Here is Ms. Linenthal. Ms. Linenthal, good to see you. Good to see you, Coach B. Ms. Linenthal, uh, do you have a cold? I asked you that last week. No, actually, Coach, it's getting better now. I, I used to have a horrible, raspy voice, but, oh, it's so much better. Well, Ms. Linenthal, I always love to see you. Anything you'd like to say to the assembled multitudes across America? Gosh, the five rules sound great, but how could I get professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Well, Miss Linenthal, I have the answer for you. Check it out. Go to wholebrainteaching.com. I'm going to take you there in a second. Click on the PayPal button and donate $5.16. 516 is the code number for this program. Before long, sometimes within minutes, you'll get an email with a professional development certificate and a PDF copy of these slides. Here's my announcement to you tonight, my friends. When the program's over, I'm going to go have a big long drink of California Clear. One hour after the program's over, I'm going back online. And if you've ordered the PDF for $5.16. I'll send it to you tonight. And if you're not watching live, gosh, I can't send it to you tonight, but odds are you will get it the same day you request. How can we how can we do this PayPal thing? But before we do, let's just check out, check out my friends, the incredible professional development certificates. There they are, with the fancy blue borders, I might add. Yes, fancy blue borders. And the blue border has two sides. So that's how you can get professional development credit. All right, let's go online. And let's look at the website. I'm going over here and if you look closely you'll see down here in the right hand side the PayPal $5.16 and that'll do it. Alright my friends now let's talk about some of are exciting announcements. Everybody ready for exciting announcements? I've, I've got to take a drink of California Clear here. We've got four amazing things coming up. I hope I can remember all four. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going back to the website and I'm going to log in. I log in your screen goes blank. Don't panic. I go up to free ebooks, my friend. Yes, music teacher. Ta da 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 da. Free ebooks, my friend. Click here to view the download page. Oh my goodness gracious. What do I see here, Chris Rexted? Chris Rexted, you think that you know all about super speed grammar. Chris Rexted's one of my colleagues, but check it out, my friends. It's now online. Electronic super speed grammar is there 
to download this very second. Ho, 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 ho. I'm going to show you some super speed grammar tonight, my friends. What a super size order of learning fun. Here's 600 PowerPoint slides guiding your kids through some of the most challenging material in elementary school grammar. Electronic super speed grammar illustrated with hundreds of high quality cartoon graphics covers nouns, verbs, sentences, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, prepositional phrases, pronouns, articles, and Chris Rexted conjunctions and appositives. The program is so lively and colorful, your kids will feel like they're reading a comic book instead of studying grammar. Yes, and you love the price. I told you it was going to be an exciting night. And I told you, my friends, please be sitting down. Because I'm just afraid you're going to hurt yourself falling all the way to the floor. Chris Rexted, Chris, Chris. We talked the other night, Chris Rexted, you and I, outside of Denny's, and you said, oh, when you add a positives, the sentences, the language just blows up. And I said to you, Chris, I said, what's in a positive? I didn't know what a positive was. And you told me, it's a phrase that adds information to a noun. I went home and I added a positive, I added sentences, and I added conjunctions. Just for you, Chris Rexted, co-founder of Whole Brain Teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, please give Chris Rexted a 10-finger electronic cyber woo for suggesting to Coach B that I add a positives. Now let's look at this program. I told you. I told you, my friends, it was going to be an incredible night. And I think you believed me. Jeff Battle, you might learn something about grammar from super speed grammar. Let's check it out. Oh, let's do check it out. Let's go right here to, uh, gosh, what do we have here? Nouns. Here's Biffy Bluebird. What's a noun? A noun is a person. Fireman is a noun because a fireman is a person. Nurse is a noun because a nurse is a person. Skipping down here. A noun is a person. A noun is also a place. A forest is a noun because a forest is a place. And then built into this whole program is tell your neighbor all about nouns. Oh, this is exciting. This is exciting. This idea is so obvious I never done it before. It was so close to me I couldn't see it. Why not build in teach okay moments into the PowerPoint? Duh. You see that? All through the PowerPoint. Build in teach okay moments. And because it's PowerPoint, you can put the teach okay moments wherever you want to, my friends. And they're not just learning about nouns, they're doing nouns. Oh, what could that mean, doing nouns? Oh, oh, just a second. Tell your neighbor about all the nouns on the farm. There's a picture. Let's look at the picture without the graphic. Tell your neighbor about all the nouns on the farm. Oh, 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 they're telling their neighbor. What's the next slide? Bingo! I hope you can see that. Maybe you can't. I'm going to make the screen smaller so that you can see right there in the picture. I've labeled a bunch of the nouns right there. Yes, all through the program, it's the same pattern. Yes, we are going to have a webcast one of these days on Super Speed Grammar. But I just want you, I want you to see where it goes. We started with nouns. I'm going down to slide 617. Check it out. Check it out, my friends.
Here we are. Look at the complexity of that graphic. Article, adjective, noun, a positive, verb, adverb, prepositional phrase, conjunction, rest of sentence. How many times can you complete this sentence? So let me try it. The, that's article. Friendly, that's adjective, bear. The friendly bear, now my appositive, with a worm on his back, that's my appositive for bear. Now I have to have my verb, smiles happily, that's my adverb, prepositional phrase, beside the stream, conjunction, and, rest of sentence, all his friends join him. That was article, adjective, noun, a positive, verb, adverb, prepositional phrase, conjunction, rest of sentence. Kids will be able to do this because it's scaffolded step by step by step. And here's the thing I'm just realizing. Here's the thing I'm just realizing, my friends. Come back to the camera. I think I forgot to mention in the product description articles. Yes, I even do articles in this. You will use it tomorrow. You will love it. Scrap Bunny, you see it? Oh, Jeff Battle, you can do better, better than that. Okay, so you see how it starts with nouns, and you see it works down through all these parts of speech, and kids are talking to each other. That's one of the wonderful announcements that we have tonight. Here's another one. The next one is a program that I'm working on for beginning, beginning, beginning readers. Beginning readers. The very start of reading. Incredible announcement number two. Here it is. I got a ways to go on it, but I just want you to see what's happening. So, beginning reader, you have, let me adjust my screen, my friends. You've got a cat with the word cat. And notice, please do notice, the letter C is in blue. That's our phonics decoder. So the kid looks at it and you say cat and they say cat. Okay. Cat. But now what? Hat. Oh. Cat. Hat. Really they're reading from the picture. And because it'll be in PowerPoint you can go back and forth as many times as you want, just between those two, cat hat, cat hat. Of course they're reading from the picture, that's okay. They're beginning readers, but now what happens? Hat cat. Now the word is disassociated from the picture. Let me go over that point. So I got cat, and here's the word, and a beginning reader can't even tell which is the word and which is the picture. You know what I'm saying? So let's pull that word out away from, so it's no longer framed by the picture. Let it stand out to the side here. You see where this is going? Hat cat. But wait a second. Cat hat? Ho, ho, ho. Kids love upside down stuff. You with me? Now, check this out. Hat cat. Now the words are not right next to the thing they're identifying. They're in a speech bubble. Hat cat, cat hat. Now, stop the music. Now they're actually reading. Can you see that? They're actually reading now. Because the picture is just a distant cue. They've got to look at the words to say hat cat and cat hat. That's reading. That's in six slides. They're reading. You know what's coming next. You know what's coming next. Hat cat, cat hat. Oh, they're reading up a storm. Cat cat, hat hat. You see, you can't go by the pattern, my little friend. First it was cat hat, hat cat, then cat cat, hat hat. They're reading. They're reading eight slides into the stinking program. 
What might happen next? Oh, I don't know. Rat. Cat. Hat. Hat rat. Rat hat. Rat hat cat. See, pull the words away from what they represent, but they're still side by side. Flip it. Cat hat rat. Hat cat rat. Flip the hat around different places. Here we go. Hat hat cat cat rat rat. And they are reading three words. Yes. And what's next? Cat. Hat. Rat. Bat. Bat cat. Cat bat. And it goes on and on and on until we come to king. Oh, what rhymes with king? Wings. Check it out. King wings. Wings king. King, king, wings, wings. Can you dig it? Cry. Pie. Cry, pie. Uh, pie, cry. Pie, cry, cry, pie, pie, cry, cry, pie. Can you see? He's got that little pie in his mouth. Pine. Shine. Shine, pine. Shine, pine, shine. Shine, shine, pine, pine. You see, you see, tell me if you see the power of this early reader. Rhyming words, which kids love, blue phonics decoder to help down the line with sounding words out, link the word to the picture, pull the word away from the picture, then have something in the picture be a speech bubble where the actual reading is going on. So simple, so fun. And I believe that there are about 50 words that we can put together into entertaining graphics. Most of them are nouns, but this is a pre-K reader. This is a reader for young ELL kids, anybody who's struggling, little time with the program they'll be able to read 50 words, which is a lot for kindergarten. You know what I'm saying? And these are words that typically aren't covered in kindergarten. Shine and pine and cry and pie. All right, my friends. Now, that is two of the announcements. Here is my next announcement. Very, very excited. We have some new buttons for you. Check it out. I'm coming up here real close. A rule number one button. How many ways could you use a rule number one button in your classroom, Lubbock Lightning, Deb Weigel? Oh my goodness. I wonder, I wonder, oh, yes. Here is a rule number two button. Raise your hand for permission to speak. You see the picture? It comes from the rule posters at wholebrainteaching.com in the e-store rule two. Oh my goodness here's rule three Deb Weigel gotta have it don't you rule three raise your hand for permission to leave your seat and I wonder if there's a rule four button yes indeed rule four Make smart choices, and all these to go along with teacher's favorite, rule five. Yes, indeed, my friends, the five buttons. And, of course, we have our standard pink rule five button and our WBT oh yeah button and our red and black button, but brand new rule buttons. You know you've got to have them. How are you going to get them? That's the problem, see? You're going to have to come to a conference. But we will look into setting up mail order at the store 
we'll mail them to you, but start bugging us. Will you start bugging us about getting the mail order going? You know, we could also mail you printed copies of the rules for a nominal fee. But tell me how much you, yes, if you come, Jamie Hart, on Saturday, you might have a chance of getting a button. We might allow you to purchase a button from us. What a joyful interchange that will be. So we've had three of the wonderful announcements. One was Super Speed Grammar is posted and online. Two, we're looking at this incredible new way to teach reading to beginning readers. And three, we've got some brand new rule buttons, but we're not done yet, my friends. We are not done yet. Let's go. Here we go. Let's go to Whole Brain Teaching, the forum. The forum, my friends. Let's go down here to the forum. Oh, oh my goodness. There seems to be a new section on the forum. I wonder what this could be about, this new section on the forum. Let's look at it closely. It's Coach B's test team. Yes. Tryouts are beginning tonight for Coach B's test team. So what we're going to do, let's get the camera back on Coach B. What we're going to do is we're going to form an all-American team of whole brain teachers at every grade level. And Malaysia, you're invited. Turkey, you're invited. A team of whole brain teachers who are going to set out to crush the state standards. And we're going to do it, brothers and sisters, together. Join my team. I'm going to be the coach. You're the players. And we're going to show you what to do to crush the state standard tests and like a good team, you're going to help each other. So the first thing I want you to do tonight is introduce yourself right here in the introduction section. Then get started on the super improvers wall. And I will be adding, little by little, more folders that you can use to play along with Coach B and all American whole brain teaching team. And you know my friends, we got to have a snappy team name. Snappy team name. Come on, give me some suggestions. I've already got one, but I'd like to hear your suggestions. Snappy team name for Coach B's All-American Whole Brain Teachers Test Team. Test Team does sound great. Pastor Shipley, you're in. Shipley, I don't want you sitting on the bench. I want you out on the floor. Your kinders, you can definitely play. We want kinders to get used to state test taking. Biffle's best, that's pretty good. Test busters, that's not too bad. I'm drinking some California clear here. The problem is it's got to be kind of fun. You know what I'm saying? The Sky Riders, wow, that's a good one because I used to work for a newspaper called the Sky Rider. Brain Busters Special Edition. My friends, do you see the power of bringing together a whole bunch of desperate teachers to increase student scores? We can share with each other our best student test-taking techniques, but I have some specific things coming up for you. I definitely want you to get going on the Super Improvers wall. Read the All About Coach B's team. Top notch. You know what? Check it out. Assessmenters. That's good. Assassinators. That's good. Now, the name of the team, my friends, the name of the team is the Mighty Wibbeteers. That's who we are, my friends. We are the Mighty Wibbeteers. Yes, the Mighty Wibbeteers. Everywhere we go, EO, people want to know, EO, who we are. 
We're the mighty Wibbeteers. Mighty, mighty Wibbeteers. Oh, yeah. Everywhere we go, people want to know who we are. We're the mighty Wibbeteers. Mighty, mighty Wibbeteers. Can you feel the vibes, my friend? Join Coach B's team. Nobody's going to get cut unless they don't start showing up to practice. Let's help each other out. Give me some music, please. The Wibbit Tears. They'll know us by our smarts. That, that's right. Well, Rise Kinder, I'm glad he was sitting down. The mighty Wibbit Tears, you got it, Deb Weigel. Deb, I, I can't wait to hear how you're going to use Super Speed Grammar in Arizona, in Yuma. Let's look at that screen again. Start by reading my note there about my team. Then start introducing yourselves. Do we have shirts? No, but we're going to have tattoos, Shipley. We do need some shirts. Music teacher, if you'll do it, we'll play it. Oh, Jeff Battle, you're rocking. Coach glasses, everybody could wear glasses. That's good. All right, my friends, four incredible announcements. Let's review them. Nancy Stoltenberg, aren't you glad you hung around? Super Speed Grammar is now online, ready for download. Use it. Number two, new program coming up for beginning readers based on rhymes and pictures. Number three, new buttons. Bug us to set up some kind of shipping system. And number four, Coach B's team starts tonight. You're on my squad. I love teaching Wibbeteers. That's right, music teacher. We'll work on that mailing system. Any Rebecca Crooks, good to see you. Any questions for us tonight, my friends, before we sign off? Now, next week, we will be talking about the scoreboard. Yes, the scoreboard. So if you miss any of these broadcasts, let's just take a look at where, what you can do if you miss a broadcast. I'm going here to um, the main page. Can you rewatch this? We will let you rewatch it. The limit, though, is 15 rewatchings. Here's how you rewatch it. Check it out, my friends. Come down here. You see, there you are right now. And down here across the bottom, that is where you have our video library. And you can scroll through that video library all the way back to program 501. Rewatch them anytime you want. And if you want professional, the amount for tonight's broadcast is $5.16. That's right, Nancy. All right, my friends. Any questions for Coach B before we sign off? Great broadcast tonight. I love your enthusiasm. I just couldn't wait to show you Super Speed Grammar, and I wasn't really sure about that early reader until I started explaining it, and then I just it exploded for me. All right, my friends. See you next Tuesday night, same time, same place, for the scoreboard. And I'd love to see you in Florida. We've got some conferences coming up in Palmdale and in Indio, check the calendar. And so, my friends, as we say every night, power to the teachers, and God bless us all. We have the best profession on earth. See you next Tuesday night. Thank you so much.